it should just slide in nicely. Mm. Lovely crunchy noise. Buonasera, this evening I'll be cooking uh, a focaccia with uh, courgettes and uh, bacon and sausages. Uh, it's a very quick and easy meal. If you're running out of time one day and uh, you go and look in the fridge, you can use anything you like, but that is what I've got in the fridge and that is what I'm gonna be using tonight. I've got a bowl with 350 grams of uh, plain flour. I will be adding half of a bag of uh, fast action dried yeast. This is uh, um, available readily from any supermarket, literally approximately half. Here it is, this is what I'm using tonight. One teaspoon of uh, salt, which is uh, two of these little things here. I'll um, dig a little hole using a couple of uh, wooden sticks. You can use a fork or a, or a spoon, <laughs> it doesn't have to be, or your finger. And this is 200 milliliters of uh, water, just uh, fresh water, um, the equivalent of a glass. I've got some olive oil and uh, I will be measuring a couple of uh, spoons uh, full of olive oil. And uh, start mixing with uh, your sticks or with your hands or with whatever you choose to use. It could be a fork as well. Once you start seeing that uh, it gets a little bit difficult to mix, it's time to pour it on your worktop. And now you can use your fingers and your hands. Once your dough starts getting into a single sort of form, um, start using the palm of your hand, like I'm doing, to um, model it and give it a shape. And turn it. Julie tells me that this is called kneading. Is that right, Julie? That's correct. <laughs> I'm not adding any extra flour, um, so you need to be careful that it doesn't stick onto your worktop. But if it does become a problem, by all means, add a little. After a couple of minutes, you can see that it's uh, not too sticky. So put it back in the bowl and uh, put a plastic uh, uh, film. I've got this uh, handy little cover, but you can use a tea towel or a cloth, something that uh, stops it from uh, drying. And uh, you leave it to rest for 15 minutes. That is one five, no less than 15 minutes. Don't be tempted because uh, it needs to uh, rest and also it will become elastic and uh, good to go in a little while. While the dough does um, rest, we will be um, getting on with uh, the next part of the recipe. So pour a little olive oil in the pan. I've already chopped one uh, courgette. I'm going to be chopping my second courgette. I remove the top and the bottom and uh, I'll do them in half moons. <clears throat> approximately half a centimeter thick each slide. One small onion, I'm using a red onion. Um, you can choose to use a white onion, it doesn't make any difference. I like red onions because of their color, but also I think they're slightly sweeter. And I'll cut them uh, not too thin, but also not too chunky either. I'll give them a little mix uh, and uh, I will uh, place them on uh, the hob on uh, a medium to high heat to start browning. Having chopped my vegetables, I'm now moving on to my meat. I've got four little chipolatas here. You can use any sausages and uh, this is approximately 100 grams in weight. But you can choose uh, to use uh, whatever quantity you like. And of course, if you are vegetarian, you do not have to use any meat. You can use uh, mushrooms instead. And I've got also here a couple of uh, slices of bacon, which uh, I will be slicing as well. Again, you decide 
the size, but uh, I will do them in a similar size to my chipolatas. So the vegetables are sizzling nicely, and uh, this one is a bit chunky, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> and uh, I will be adding now my meat. The sausages and the bacon have now been sizzling for a good three minutes and uh, at this stage I will be adding uh, some uh, fresh spinaches. Do not worry, I know that it looks like uh, there is too much there but uh, within a couple of minutes they will be reducing to next to nothing and uh, all this uh, grandeur will disappear. However, I will be putting the lid on and I'll turn the heat down onto a simmering point for a little while. Vegetables are cooking and uh, I will now moving on to the next stage with the dough. Um, here I've got a white little thin chopping board, of course any color will do, and uh, some baking paper. I will uh, be sprinkling a little amount of uh, flour just on top. I'll pick my dough, place it down, and uh, I will be cutting it in uh, approximately in half. You can use your hands. I'll put half back and uh, I'll make a little ball. And uh, spread it initially with my hands. To give it a little shape. A round shape. This needs to be the shape of your frying pan. In this particular case I'll be using the same frying pan where I'm cooking my vegetables. Get a rolling pin, put a little flour on top and uh, start working your dough as if you're making a pizza really. It needs to be roughly the same size as your pan. Of course the paper is helpful because uh, you can uh, turn it around easily. I have removed the white board for now, I will add it later as it was driving me mad. I'll put my board underneath and uh, I'll get on with the second piece. The vegetables and the sausage and uh, the bacon is cooked. I will be turning it off. Effectively, they cooked uh, for approximately 10 to 12 minutes. And uh, I'll let them rest uh, on one side for a few minutes. As I want to use this pan to cook the dough, I will be pouring the mix in a plate so that I, as well as cooling down a little bit quicker, give me the opportunity to wash it up. So back to our dough, vegetables are cooling down. We will start filling them up now. I'll start with some cheese. This is some uh, Gouda. And uh, I will be putting uh, four slices of uh, cheese as a, a layer. Keep away from the edges by a couple of centimeters. The other day I made some ricotta to do one of my dishes uh, and uh, I will be using it as I've got it. But uh, if you do not have ricotta, do not go and buy it specifically for this job. It's only because if I do not use it, it will go off and I want to make use of it. So I'm using some ricotta, but by all means, you choose to do so if you wish, but uh, you don't have to. By the way, if you want to see how I make my ricotta, uh, I'll post uh, the link uh, on uh, this video, also up here, but also at the end of the video, so you can uh, make your own if you want. So we've done some cheese, we've done some ricotta, I will now be pouring uh, my mix. It might be enough, oh, sorry, it will definitely be enough, it might be a little bit too much actually. Um, didn't realize it was going to be this big. So I so might not be able to... There was a lot of spinach, wasn't there? Yeah, I might not be able to... Maybe one courgette. Maybe one courgette. Yum. Again, make sure that you stay you can hear my phone. <laughs> you stay at least a couple of centimeters or an inch away from the edges. I don't know, what do you think? Shall we go, Julie? Shall we go for the full monte? Too late. 
too late, let's go for it. Let's be brave. You're gonna be a monster, but uh, we'll see. And I'll go in reverse now, so I'll put a little bit more ricotta, again, because I've got it. And uh, the same quantity of cheese. Cheese is very important here because you want it to be nice and stringy when uh, it's cooked. By the way, I have drained uh, some of the water from the spinaches. Um, there is still a little seeping through, so make sure that uh, you do not have a lot of water lurking around. Now you require a little bit of uh, skillful handling, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Just uh, get the parchment paper and uh, place it on the top, remove it, and as long as you are dealing with uh, similar sizes, because the, this is quite elastic, you can play with it, which is the beauty of it and uh, use your fingers to seal the edges. Get hold of a fork and uh, just go around the edges as well to give that extra grip. And then just uh, fold it back on itself to make sure that it's properly sealed. Clean the frying pan, has warmed up slightly, make sure it's dry, no oil. And uh, what I do, you can do this in many ways, I'll pop it on top of my focaccia, like so, which beautifully fits. And then uh, quite firmly flip it around. Remove your paper. Give it a, a little shimmy, to use a technical cooking word, and put it back on the hob. Place the lid on and turn it on a simmering temperature. Mine was going to be number three out of nine. And we will leave it like this for four to five minutes, but we will check it in between. After four minutes, um, you can see that uh, the whole thing is now loose and uh, has been on a very, very low heat. I will be turning it up because I, I want it to be golden at the bottom. So I'm now turning it on to number five, maybe even number six. And uh, do check the lid. And uh, if you get any condensation build up in here, make sure that you wipe it with your cloth. Okay, this is uh, what I was referring to. Ensure you wipe it off. And uh, let's take a look. Need to come really. Ooh. See that it's nice and golden? It's time to be turned around. Put a little flour on a plate, as it's going to be sticky on the top. Place the plate on top, just like you would do with a frittata. Turn it around. And uh, it should just slide in nicely. We will place the lid back on. I will turn it on number five this time and I will let it cook for a further four to five minutes, but I will be checking in between. If you see that it start smelling burnt and uh, it uh, cooking too fast, turn the temperature down and uh, just uh, keep an eye on it. Okay, uh, you can hear the sizzle. It's uh, done, it's heavy, <laughs> I'll tell you. And uh, it's all very loose. So quite simply, I'll be using this lovely chopping board which uh, Mikey, my brother-in-law, made me one Christmas for pizzas. And uh, this is uh, ideal as well. I'm left it to rest maybe for a minute before I cut it. Lovely crunchy noise. Just like a cake. 
I'm using a cake spatula. <laughs> and let's lift it and see what we have done. Oh my God, <laughs> look at that. That's delicious. <laughs> you can see, you can see a mixture of ingredients. I cannot see the sausages, but I know they're there. <laughs> yep, me too. Send it around the other way, actually. There. Aha, I can see some onion. There. It looks very nice. It smells very nice, but does it taste nice? There's only one way to find out, and that is to tuck in, Julie. Mm. You need to make sure that uh, it has cooled down a bit because otherwise it's too hot. Mmm. Perfetta. Buonissima, deliziosa. Definitely worthwhile trying. You can test the spinach, you can test the courgette, you can test the meat. And uh, what a delicious and quick and easy meal. I, again, I fully recommend it. And uh, buon appetito. Ciao ciao for now, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, arrivederci alla prossima volta, bye!